if you take care of the reviews, then your prices are going to go up. Then your bookings are going to go up. So like if you can just hit that one metric, like five star, five star, five star, five star, the listing is going to make more money. The owner is going to be happier. Cleaners are going to be happier because they're getting paid more for more cleans and just, you know, everything, you know, moves up a level. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. All right. What's going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, B? My brother, so good to see you. Double episodes. Keep that keep the brain young. I don't, Keeps the energy like, up, man. I'm right? feeling it's, good. It's funny. Yeah. And, and you know what's funny? Just before this, I had to pull a trick out of the old book and just jump on the floor and do a couple push-ups. To get started because it's literally like you know what i mean like here's now four o'clock in the afternoon i've been up since early this morning and so i'm really literally hitting that moment you know and i just remind our good friend oh, tony robbins always talks about this just movement changes your energy mm. and so i'm like okay let's go and then like iron yeah. sharpens iron you know i'm like okay it's gonna be fun so i oh, am nice. i am excited i know this next guest that we have has been a, a long overdue kind of guest and I'm always really excited because it's usually the longer it's been, the better the episode. So <laughs> I yeah. think, I think it's going to be good. You know, it's, it's funny too. Cause like we originally connected through clubhouse. I have not been active on clubhouse in probably a year, but man, I I've made so many connections through clubhouse. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I know Julie's still going strong every Sunday, but she does it at like Sunday at six, which is usually like family time for us. So she's, a, she's, She's a monster, though. Yeah. If yeah. we all had Julie's level of work ethic and dedication. A hundred percent. So Amazing. without without further ado, let's just get in. So today on the show, we've got Sean McGregor with us. Uh, he literally found hosting through love. When he first started dating Lindsay in 2015, she was renting out uh, the second bedroom in her Austin, Texas apartment, which covered her entire rent. Think about that. Renting out one bedroom covered her entire rent. Then she would travel and she'd rent out the entire house and it would pay for her rent and travel expenses. And at the same time, she was also starting up a co-living, co-working business for digital nomads and solo travelers called Swap Lofts. Mm. Swap stands for stay, work, and play. I love that. It's so cool. Uh, Sean quickly became involved and was eventually the only person messaging up to 35 guests at a time across three <laughs> Austin locations. All this while Lindsay, Sean, and their son Jackson were thousands of miles away traveling through Eastern Europe. And then when COVID happened, uh, made hosting people in shared rooms, pretty bad idea. So he pivoted to co-hosting homes he had never been to in places he had never visited before viewing things from the traveler's mindset. So how did it go? Uh, well, Swap co-hosting now has over 2,400 Airbnb reviews, our super host with a 4.96 rating since 2018. And they're so confident in their experience that they provide to guests that it, they offer a five-star guarantee. So if they don't get a five-star for their owners, uh, they don't take any commission on it, which is oh, wow. pretty dope and pretty ballsy. So without further ado, Sean, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for having me here. Love the, the bio readout. That was pretty incredible. Did a lot of the heavy lifting for me. <laughs> Dude, the, the five-star guarantee. I love it. I yeah, love man. It. I mean, it all became, you know, I, I'll get to the whole origin story, but like the five-star guarantee just came from, you know, we were locked down during COVID and, you know, back against the wall, have to pay for our house. Um, you know, we can't host people in shared rooms anymore because that's a really bad idea during that time period. Lindsay's business was a dance camp business in eight locations. She's run for 20 years and that wasn't going to operate in 2020 either. So we had a profile with 2,000 plus reviews. Um, I'd already helped a few family friends run out their place remotely. And then like you know, the bio said, we're avid travelers, been to over 100 Airbnbs in 35 different countries and you know, have learned to do everything remotely. And so my five-star guarantee is all about just 
I'm confident in my systems, my automations, my processes, like the, you know, the ability to show a guest a great time. And so whenever I'm trying to recruit new owners to, you know, partner up with me, I had to put that out there like, well, look, I'm not in your state or I'm not in your city, but I'm so confident that I'm going to deliver a five-star review that if someone leaves anything other than that, I won't take a, you know, a commission on it. Mm. And so that's been, you know, something where it just helps me set that standard for myself and my team. And just to let everyone know, like, that's the only thing we're, you know, allowed to get. It's either mm. a five-star or a failing grade. That's so wow. good. That, that takes... I'm already excited because that that takes some guts, right? And I'm I'm really excited to just understand what the back of the house looks like because again, like that is a super ballsy kind of claim. So I assume that the back of the house is substantial enough because again, like you can say the crazy thing, but if you don't deliver on it over time, you wouldn't be where you are now, right? So the fact that you're here means that you've delivered over time. So what's the sauce? One thing I would, I, I want to oh. ask before that, yeah. because yeah. even before you get into the operations, Sorry, I, got so excited. I would imagine that you have to level set with the owners as well, because I know people have approached me to work with them in the house or the property is not what it needs to be to deliver a five-star mm. experience. And I I'm love like, that. listen, if you want to work with me, like this is, this is like our standard of what we need in here. And we're not going to skimp. Cause that, I had that bite me in the ass at the beginning where I was like, I'm just trying to grow. I'm trying to get properties. And I took on some properties that were like subpar just to get deals. And I was like, this is not worth my time after a while. And then we parted ways. Right. So totally, man. Yeah. That's definitely, you know, a key factor. I need, it needs to be a place that I would personally love to go to, or, you know, I definitely know that the guests that have stayed in my other properties would also love that property. Yeah. And so there Maybe definitely is a standard. Yeah, how to say it nicely, because I've been having that conversation a lot with people lately. And it, it, no matter how good I think I say it, I look in their face and I can see that they're going like, did it just call my house? No, up to standard. And I'm just like, I wish I'm like, I don't know. I'm saying it for you, right? So like, I yeah. want you to know that this is what you need to be an outlier in our market. So without further ado. Yeah, man. I mean... No, you're good. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely like all the properties I, you know, I, because we do have that digital nomad kind of backgrounds, like it has to have the fast Wi-Fi, obviously. But, you know, we want it to be a place that's located next to something fun, whether it be a lake or an awesome city, because, you know, everyone comes to that place, not just for the home. They come for whatever the local attractions are. And so we need to make sure that it's close enough to have, you know, great recommendations to where they can go out and have a blast outside in the town or in the lake or whatever they're doing. But also the house itself has to be, you know, I like places where I can imagine, you know, me and my brothers and our families all hanging out, you know, there's fun games like cornhole, you know, fast Wi-Fi, big TVs, fire pit, you know, just you want to have like that family, you know, coming together moment where you just have so many fun options of things to do. So a lot of the houses have like, pool tables or stand up arcade games or, you know, foosball, air hockey, just all the little things where you can get that, those competitive juices flow in, you know, a little trash talk with the family. And then again, be a great enough location where you can still have so much fun outside the house. I learned so, yeah. quickly that my wife kicks my ass in ping pong and it drives me crazy. I'm like, it like, it, it's so funny. And she like knows that. So like anytime we go to a property that has a ping pong table, she's just like game on. And I'm like, I got to find oh something God. else that I can like beat her at. Right. She's like very reserved, but she's like ridiculously good at like anything semi-athletic or athletic. And it's like crazy. So totally. fun, fun side story. Yeah. Do you have a ping pong table at the, at the Orlando house? I do. And I regret putting it in because she whoops my ass every time. Yeah. We go down there. I'll, I'll train before I come and visit next time. And we'll just have a low. Key He's going to be like Ben session. Stiller where he just spikes one in my wife's face. And totally. <laughs> <laughs> nice hit, Fokker. <laughs> <laughs> are we still uh, friends? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. So, so how many markets are you in now, Sean? Or like, are you pretty spread out or did you focus uh, on yeah, like, there's only, market? Or? There, so there's 18 properties right now and only three are within 50 miles. Okay. Um, and, you know, Florida, North Carolina, um, Connecticut sometimes, Vermont sometimes. Um, got a few coming up in California. So kind of, you know all over just where I can find a, you know, a property fit and an owner fit. Cause my whole thing is I want to make it hands off for them. 
if they want to be really involved with their property, it also might not be like a great fit for us. Like I want to make it to where you just, you know, look on your account every Monday and Thursday and like you see money in there. And then I have a dashboard set up where they get, you know, any updates to get the reviews pop up automatically. So I just make it to where it's really convenient for them, but also, you know, they're hiring me so they can have more time with their families. So they're more time for the, you know, the work that they do professionally. And so I don't want to make a second job for them. So if, if they also want to be really hands-on and see everything, then, you know, it's also probably not a great fit. Yeah. And I, I like, you know, like you said, you took on some properties that, you know, weren't a great fit early on. I've definitely had those relationships to where, you know, the owner wants to see all the Airbnb messages, which makes it to where there's two communication channels every time someone asks a question, which is, yeah, it's not, not a good fit and they're not getting the freedom that they are paying for. So I need to, you know, set that kind of clear guideline at the beginning. That way, you know, it, it works out for both of us and we kind of have that meeting of the mind. Yeah. So what does that conversation kind of sound like? So, and I think obviously like it gets easier with time and with experience. Right. And, and that's obviously like, and with your own level of confidence. Right. I know like now I have some conversations that like looking back at two years ago, I would never have. Right. Like if, if I was a little ghost looking at myself talking right now, sometimes I would be like, please close your mouth. Like, please stop talking. Right. right. I can't believe you're saying that. Right. So what does that conversation look like over time and, and has it changed over time? And then do you use any literature or any kind of like presentation that's like this is why you choose me and this is why you should leave me alone to do what i know how to do best uh it's always kind of ever developing but yeah i mean from the beginning now especially i'm very direct like look i'm here to make you more money but also give you all your time back and again because i guarantee that five star review if anything does pop up i'm gonna get it taken care of immediately to where it only impacts one guest and then have it back to a five star standard for the next group. Um, and typically, you know, I can, if I find the right people and they kind of like gel with that idea of like, okay, well, he seems to know what he's doing. Um, you know, benefit of me being able to remotely host is if it works out in this one market and they like to go skiing, whatever other market, they can bring me with them to that new property they buy. Or, you know, they're not like landlocked just to whoever's in that geographic region which, um, you know, obviously helps out a lot. So yeah, I mean, owner relations is definitely a tricky part and something I've had to set guidelines around, but yeah, once you hit that perfect fit, man, I, like every one of my property owners that I work with has bought at least one other home already. So, and you I know. bet that they would refer you to other people. Cause like after I got my first yeah. three, I didn't do any more marketing. Like it just grew. Like right. they bought more and then they referred me to more people. And like, it just grew organically that way pretty quickly. So if totally, you do a good man. job, man, like the results speak for themselves. Like exactly. And that's why, you know, like the way Airbnb is set up with the review system, it's kind of amazing. Cause you're getting that like guest that paid a lot of money that is experiencing whatever you're providing and they get to review you every single week. So you get to like always have that constant check of how you're doing, how you're doing. Oh, okay. We need to fix that. Oh, they were unclear about this in the communication. So we need to fix that and answer that question before it's asked next time. And so it's just, you know, it's an always evolving thing, but yeah, I mean, I love the fact that you're there, you're hosting someone that might only have their one trip of the entire year. And you know, their the stakes are high. Cause if you're the person booking that and you have the eight family members around you, if something goes wrong, you know, you're the one that's going to get teased at Thanksgiving and, you know, all the other holidays. So it's my job to like take that very seriously and deliver that five star. And it is a great thing because if you take care of the reviews, then your prices are going to go up, then your bookings are going to go up. So like, if you can just hit that one metric, like five star, five star, five star, five star, the listing is going to make more money. The owner is going to be happier. Cleaners are going to be happier because they're getting paid more for more cleans and just, you know, everything, you know, moves up a level. So that's why that's like the pure focus. I want to go back to E's question and then pivot. So getting into like the systems of what you use to run that. And then also thinking through, is there anything else that you do to ensure the five-star review, right? Like I know we've had some guests that, um, like I've talked to Kyle Stanley, buddy of mine, who will also be at the conference. And mm -hmm. uh, 
he puts in his checkout instructions or his review request message, like, hey, by the way, we bonus our cleaners based on five star reviews. So, like, subconsciously, like, if if that's you know, awesome. somebody else's livelihood is yeah, online you know, for a five star review, over. like, you're probably just gonna leave it and send private feedback. So I was like, totally. oh, that's a ninja tip right there. That is pretty ninja. Um, I like that. So, um, so for me, like, obviously, we've traveled a lot. Like, we see everything from a kind of a guest perspective, and you know, there's a lot of people we've hosted five thousand groups at this point. Um, there's a lot of people that still are, they're kind of new on Airbnb. So they might not know how to use the app and the platform very well. So we use, you know, automated messaging up until check-in day. And then we use, um, a tech, I actually text message all the guests on check-in day with their information, with their door code, with a photo of the front of the house to where it's like really, really simple for them to, you know, check in and have a good time. But because it's actually in a text message, you know, it's a more personal touch, more personal feel. Plus, you know, it's familiar for everybody. Like everyone knows how to use their phone. Everyone knows how to text. They know how to get a hold of me. I gave them my information immediately when they were checking in that day. And so that removes a lot of the friction. And then also the day after, you know, if they check in on Tuesday, Wednesday morning, every single time I just check in quick message. Hey, Jim, want to make sure you're having a great time so far. If you need anything, please let me know. And that's kind of the discovery process to find out if anything's going wrong at all. Because if you, if you find out like, oh, it's going great, but you know, the washing machine's not working or whatever it is, then you have something you can actually take care of, solve their problem, apologize profusely and get things back on track. And you know, there's the weird kind of like law of business where if something goes wrong and you have a good recovery, people actually give you better reviews. They're actually happier because like, wow, they really cared for me. Well, he really, you know, went above and beyond to, you know, fix what was wrong. Um, so that's like a huge thing that like, Almost, we, we traveled three months through Canada last year and stayed in probably 25 Airbnbs and two hosts the entire time, like checked in after, you know, after we started our stay. Yeah. And that's like such low hanging fruit. Yeah. And just that like little like touch point of, hey, just want to make sure you're having a great time. And if you get a, yeah, it's awesome. Then I know, okay, that person's having a good time. I, it's safe for me to leave a five star review. And then here's a hack that has really served me well. If I know they're having a great time on, you know, as soon as it's uh, available for me to leave a review, I'll write one up, I'll screenshot it. And because I'm texting them, I'll text them a message saying, Hey, thanks for being a great guest. I just left you a five-star review and I'll send the picture of the review I left them. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you know, it takes away the ambiguity of like, Ooh, am I going to get a five-star review? Did, you know, do we leave it clean enough? They know they get a five-star review. Plus it's not like a two word great guests. Like they're getting like a, you know, full paragraph. And so they typically reciprocate both with the five star review and like a detailed review, you know, with praising our hosting, praising the property, and all that's just very marketable to future potential guests because they're seeing like actual detailed, like glowing reviews about the property instead of just like nice day, good location, you know? Yeah. And like, again, like the more you stack those up, kind of the more bulletproof your listing becomes because, you know, if you're getting like, 4.98 on 70 reviews, like anyone's kind of like, all right, this is kind of a surefire thing. Yeah. So are those things, I know you said you sent them as a text message. Are those text yep. messages automated through a, through a software? Are you physically doing it? And then, um, sorry. yeah, sorry to cut you off, but uh, I use a lot of Zapier. Um, and, you know, that's been like one of my passions, especially over the last couple of years, but especially the last like three or four months has just been like, you know, documenting, systematizing, um, but I use a, a phone software called open phone yeah. that I highly recommend to everybody. Um, and it just allows me and my team to like work from our desktop. It, you can see the messages anybody sends. Plus if there's a specific question that a guest asks, you can actually have an internal thread on that and I can communicate with my team. Like, okay, I would reply this way and she can just copy paste send. And it all looks like a test message from the guests, but through that software and Zapier, you know, we can, automatically send the door code check-in information, you know, customized to that guest with their name, with their phone number, with, you know, whatever their check-in time. And so it feels like a personal touch, but a lot of it is like a one button click or even just automatic. I love it. And I yeah. think honestly, that is the thing that people, I, the people that are able to really grow and maximize this is the same thing that everybody that I know there's a wholesaler, right? It's not necessarily like the handwritten letter works better than not. 
But the mm. people that really excel are the ones that have found a technology that makes the letter looks almost handwritten. Because again, to me, like the thing that like, again, it's it's so evident over time is that is the system component of it and how you have to automize it because then it delivers and you're the perfect example, right? It delivers consistency of quality of service and quality of product. Right? For sure, man. How else do you do it? Like how else do you get only five star review if you are not consistent with your product? There's no, there's no way. Exactly, man. And yeah, like, you know, hiring the first person was a huge, like, you know, challenge, but growing step for me just because you're finally having to like, you know, like ever since I was in college, I started my own business and I've like just done my own thing. I did like golf discount cards and I did like, you know, college discount cards at a couple different universities in Texas. Um, and, you know, it was all me. Like I did everything. I wore all the hats. I learned a lot from it, but you know, you eventually burn out, you know, it's impossible to scale if you have like all the information tra trapped in your head. And so, yeah, that's why I like trying to make things as, as easy as possible and coming from everything with a viewpoint of how can somebody else do this? Like, okay, this task needs to happen. How do I make it so simple that anybody can do this? And, you know, I read like the E-Myth last summer. Then I did like the Legends X course with uh, Julie and Jasper and Eric. And yeah, I mean, like, so from that point on, it's just been like, okay, systems, like, obviously this is the way to do it. You know, you're not going to grow Starbucks by serving every cup of coffee. Like you need to figure out how to make that consistent experience over and over again and make it very smooth and frictionless and consistent is like, again, the kind of key word, like over and over again, like once you figure out something works, you got to, okay, let's do that every single time. And if something better comes along, all right, let's adjust and improve. 100%. It's the only way to start making some serious income is to create processes and build a team and a culture. And like, that's it. So like literally the only thing that I do now is like have a team meeting and I just focus on culture. Like I have one team meeting a week and then I review the finance. Like we go through all of our KPIs every week and if they need me, they check in with me. But like, it's just creating a culture of people that care and like setting a standard and taking care of your people. Like, that's it. But if you don't have those SLPs and all those systems, like you just hire people, but then they come to you for everything because they don't know what to do. Right. So, and yeah, man, like that's something I think it's like the most important part of business. And I'm like, ding light bulb. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. Like you, you can't have everything trapped in your head and expect someone else to do a great job. Or like you also can't afford to hire another pro to do all these different tasks. You need to make the tasks so simple that anybody could come in and operate them perfectly. And yeah, I mean, that just, just the, the whole step of like actually hiring someone and getting in that mindset of like, okay, how do I pass this on? And, you know, like I said, um, before the call started, you know, I have four and a half year olds and a couple, like a year and a half ago, if something happens and like, oh, a fan isn't working in Asheville, all of a sudden, instead of playing with him, I'm sitting there texting and, you know, I'm like distracted and not present with my family. But like last night we went to a three hour concert, Dave Matthews, and I did look at my phone one time and everything just kept on going like clockwork. And I mean, that alone is just like invaluable to like not have to worry about the vibration on your phone. Just like, all right, she's got it. Like we're, mm -hmm. we're in good hands. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's something like, you know, the previous, I don't know, 15 years of business. Like I never had that. It was always me putting out the fires, me doing everything. And like to finally, get to a point where I'm confident enough to like systematize and, you know, delegate and automate, uh, just, you know, opens up so many more opportunities and lets me work on the stuff that I actually like instead of, you know, doing the routine mundane things that someone else could, you know, also handle. And especially if you make it simple, do it just as well as I can. Yeah. I love that. And I, and it leads me actually, it ha I have two questions for you. You can choose which one you want to answer. All right. so question one is then what does the team look like? now so what what's your what's your back of the house and question two is um what now that you created the team and everything else what do you spend your time on like what does that look like because again like you said something that's so important because if you just leverage and then stay focused on what you are good at life gets a lot more enjoyable right so what does that look like for you 
Yeah, man. Um, well, the like the important goal that I work towards, like I have it above my keyboard on my computer, is like maintain a location independence. And that just means like I'm never the person that goes down and handles the bed. I'm never the person that needs to physically go fix something. Like that, just having that like line in the sand means I have to find a way to fix that without me physically being there. And that opens it up where we can kind of like live our family vision of traveling around and working remotely and everything. Um, right now the team is just one other VA, but I'm getting ready to actually, uh, probably hire two more, but like Jay Massey from clubhouse had a good line that I'll borrow. Um, where he said like your first, v your first VA or your first employee should be automation. And like, that's the thing I focus on the most. And that I actually like really love like trying to figure out and do is like, okay, how can I set this up to where it triggers? And that happens automatically. And that's honestly what I spend most of my time doing now is just like figuring out like, okay, well, you know, this only takes five minutes a day, but how can I make it take zero minutes a day? And if you keep on stacking up those wins over and over again, and again, making it a more consistent, reliable experience, then, you know, everybody has a better life. Like I want to make things like for the only one teammate right now, but as I grow, I want to make them do as little as possible. Like I want as much to be automated as possible to where their main thing is just like focus on if someone communicates, then you reply within five minutes every single time. And like, you'll always have the ability to do that. But if I can take something off their plate with automating it, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to work to do that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what we just talked about on our last episode about yeah. like, what do we focus on now? It's just making those little tweaks. Like, yeah. to, like all those little adjustments of like, okay, things are good. How can I make them a little bit better? A little bit better. A little bit better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, the text message example, I used to like, here's just a small win, but it actually saves so much time. Like I used to sit there and like, you know, physically send a picture of, you know, the front door or like the link to the video that shows how to find parking or whatever it is. But now I just have a little link that goes to a page on my website that has all that information. And then that makes it to where I don't have to physically hit, choose photos, click, click, send times, you know, 15 groups each day. And so like just that one little tweak, it's like, okay, now it can be automated and they get the same information, still a personal touch, but you know, it saves me and whoever, you know, joins my team in the future from having to do that themselves. Hmm. And yeah, on, that the, just... on the reviews, the fact that you leave like longer written reviews, are those, do you have a template for that as well? Or are those, so they're roughly like you have a couple of templates that you, yeah. So kind of a rotating template, but you know, obviously we'll, you know, change their name. And then, um, you know, like if there are specific details about them, like if they were really helpful to cleaners or they went above and beyond, and they told me about this thing that could be fixed or whatever, I'll, I'll add a little something to personalize it. And same with the check-in messages. Like if they're coming in for a birthday or whatever, like the occasion is, I try yeah. to personalize those little things, but I can set it up the night before and then have it sent the next day when it's time appropriate. So you can just kind of like batch things and then, you know, have the computer that's reliable actually take care of it instead of me like, oh God, I forgot. And having that kind of stress sitting in your head of like, oh shit, I need to remember. And, you know, mm -hmm. at 945 around that time, I have to message them. And yeah, just as much stuff as you can take off your kind of brain and like mental load to free up to focus on other things. Like you're obviously a happier, healthier, better version of yourself. So what's, what's the goal for, for swap now over the next 12 to 24 months? Like, what are you guys going after now? So there's a couple different, like, so the original business, like in the bio was a co-living co-working. And what that is, is kind of like upscale hostel with a kind of digital nomad solo traveler focus. And like that whole business was just magical, man. Like we get a lot of great reviews now with our properties, but with that, like that business, you'd get reviews that would say, oh my God, I had a life-changing experience. Oh my God, I mean, it's my, my new best friends. You know, things like that really elevate and have a lot of purpose and can really like, you know, we live in kind of a detached, lonely world right now. And we basically had like a friend factory built up where like people from, would come in from around the world, all kind of like the same digital nomad, solo traveler, like free spirit kind of people. But They'd walk in strangers and then four days later, you'd always see it. They're like, oh my God, yeah, man, we'll, we'll meet up in Peru. Like, you know, so nice meeting you. And like, they'll have these deep conversations and all these like, 
you know, like you can't have like a deep conversation with a friend that knows all of your other people, you know, all the other people in your life, but two strangers that meet up and have a bunch of beers and, you know, connect in Austin, they'll like kind of get deep with things and like really have some breakthroughs and some like amazing conversations and really get to be like real tight very, very quickly. So that business definitely in the future, we want to bring back, you know, COVID sucks. And like, we had three locations at one point. Now we just have our one house that we're, you know, keeping ourselves. Um, but we definitely want to get back to that at some point where we just have that experience. The other thing that I want to start doing because we do love to travel and you know, we're in a, a world now where people can work from home, but if you can work from home, you can actually work anywhere in the world. And one of the things that stops you from doing that is your anchor of a house that you're paying for. Because like anytime you travel right now, you're paying for two places at once. But what I want to, you know, try to inspire people to do and potentially like partner with people to do is look, if you work from home and you have a nice home, I will help to rent that out while you're gone. Even if it's for like three or four months, that way you can actually have those long travels. And instead of you paying for two places, your one house is paying for itself, but then also for your travels. Mm-hmm. And then travel's not expensive at that point. It's like actually, you know, if you're paying for lodging in Croatia, you're actually saving money of where you would pay in Austin. And then you're having these amazing experiences. You're getting that like precious time with family where you're taking a ton of photos. You're kind of extending, you know, your life with like the little kids because you're doing so many new things and you're in the, out of your comfort zone and you're like, you know, getting all those fresh experiences over and over again. So that's something like purpose wise, I'd love to get into just help people like, you know, free themselves from necessarily thinking I have to be in this city the entire time, keep your home base, run it out while you're gone and then travel around, but then come back for six months of the year and be around family and friends. Yeah, yeah, dude. I love that. I can that. see it. The, the swap yeah, your program. Energy. Swap You're your awesome, house. Man. I'll rent it, and then I'll yeah. find you places to stay. Yeah. Exactly, your, man. Your energy is awesome, though. Like, and and you can tell that like it's a genuine. And I we said this in the last episode. I honestly like I don't see successful hosts being money hungry. They're more like committed to an experience, committed to the hospitality, committed to community, committed to whatever it, it is, right? But it like it makes such a difference because it's also like it just makes creating whatever you're creating so much more fun, right? Because there is just okay. such a genuine like kind of fun to it. Um, and I love the idea. And I think you and your family are such a perfect example of it. So it's very cool to see like that you guys embody the business model so much. Um, you remind me of like uh, Patagonia, like the Patagonia. Is oh, that yeah. Different? That he yeah, Gerard. Like everybody, everybody goes surfing midway through the day. And yeah, like you can't work. Everybody has to go surf. That's yeah, the dude. vibe that I'm getting from you. I'm like very much like for the people, yeah, for the company, for the pleasure, you know. And then you make money. Yeah, exactly. You know, don't live to work, work to live. And yeah, man, like you know, I, I definitely think they're. You know, it's a growing wave, obviously, because everyone had two years of practice of working from home and like knowing that they can do their job from their home. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like if you can kind of let people know, like, hey, you're actually sitting in your ticket out of there. Like you don't have to be rich or wealthy to actually travel the world and do those things you want to do. Like your ticket to freedom is right there and you're sitting in it right now. Just rent it out while you're gone. And then, you know, your living costs will actually go down because your home will pay you more than you know your, the cost of the house but also it'll pay for your travel and mm. yeah i mean that, that's like the purpose side of things that i want to get to for sure so the one side of connecting digital nomads and solo travelers and the other part is just helping to create more <laughs> i love it man well before we get into the last question i want to be respectful of your time first i want to acknowledge you and thank you for coming on truly appreciate it really looking forward to hanging out with you in nashville totally man um, where can folks learn more about you and, and swap? Uh, so my socials are pretty lame right now. I'm getting that all kind of uh, going. Like I really haven't told any friends, family or previous business contacts that I do this business just because I have been like making sure all the systems are tight and automations are working and you know, that I can, if the fire hydrant opens, I can actually handle it. Um, but stay You know, you find general information about us. Feel free to reach out. 
if you need help running out your home, I'd be happy to help. But also just, you know, shoot me a message if you want to talk or if you have, you know, questions about anything that I can help with. And then also, before I forget, um, I'm lucky enough to be part of this book project called Hospitable Hosts. And it's actually like basically filled with people from your conference, like Julie George, uh, <laughs> Stacey St. John, we got um, Dr. Rachel in here, Mark Simpson. Um, and luckily, I'm one of the 40 authors that wrote a chapter of the book. So each one of these 40 different, you know, individuals that are like made hospitality their life has taken one chapter, about like 10 to 12 pages, and just, you know, share their story, kind of how they got into it, and then offer some tips or tricks to help inspire other people. And so it comes out Monday, uh, May 16th. Um, so yeah, just a couple of days from now, it'll actually be out, but super excited. Where can, they, you know. where can they find it? Is it on Amazon or is there a website for it? Or? So you go to just hospitablehost.com. Um, and if you go to that, you can like just put your email in, you know, and then as soon as it's available on Monday, you'll get an email, but yeah, on Monday, you'll be able to find it and you know, it'll be, a, you know, Amazon and all the other different places. But you know, I, I got my copy just a couple of days ago and I've read like, I don't know, probably almost half of it. And like, dude, these people are badasses. I mean, it's so cool to hear like, cause you know, even the people, you know, like from clubhouse or like from podcasts you've heard, they're still like so much they like overcame. And you know, like I, what I love about it is everyone's like so genuine and kind of like vulnerable with it. Or like they tell about like where they screwed up or like the things that were going wrong in their life, but then hospitality helped them like climb the mountain and get back up and like find something they were actually passionate about. So yeah, it's a really cool book, man. I'm like, completely honored to be a part of it and highly recommend everyone check it out if you're interested in hospitality. Love it. Love it. So the last question we ask all of our guests is what is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? It's tough, man. Like there's so many different things that I've like thought about in this lot. The easiest, lowest hanging fruit that I mentioned before is like, just send a check-in message, like a checkup the day after they start their stay just connect with them. Like if you do that, I guarantee your reviews will get better by, you know, 90%. Just because if there are ever any problems, you'll find out about it during their stay so you can take care of it instead of learning about it in a nasty review later. Um, the other thing I would definitely say is this is a business. So focus on the big picture. Like don't bad math your guests. Don't like trade one star reviews. Don't go after them if there's like a makeup stain on one little towel. Just chalk it up. There's like cost of doing business, move forward, focus on the bigger picture and just move on to the next guest. So I mean, like, you know, there will be another guest. So you just got to make sure I'm focusing on them. If anything goes wrong, fix it. If there's questions you didn't know how to answer, find out how to answer it and then make it a, something that your team can find next time it's asked. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the main thing is just focus on the big picture, man. Don't sweat the small stuff and yeah, check in with, your guests at least one time during their stay. Cause if you do that, like they'll feel way more taken care of and then you'll be able to solve any problems they might ha be, you know, having at your property. Love it. Love, Love it. it. Well, Sean McGregor, thank you so much for coming on here, bro. Really appreciate yeah, your man. time. Thank you as always. And for the folks that are listening, if you have not gotten your tickets yet for Nashville, go to strwealthconference.com. I'm not kidding. Like it's going to sell out. Like we're almost there. So if you really want to go, then go like, go get your tickets now. I'll be there. E will be there. Sean will be there. I will be there. Amazing podcast guests that we've had will be there. So you definitely don't want to miss it. It's June 6th to the 8th in Nashville, Tennessee. Again, it's strwealthconference.com. Again, Sean, thanks again, brother. Looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks. And yeah, uh, man. that's it for this episode, everybody. Take care. Ciao, All guys. Right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.